Our coverage continues from Ohio State at the Big Ten Media Days. Mark Coons met up with Tony Gerdeman from BuckeyeHuddle.com to get deeper analysis on this year's upcoming Buckeye team and what we can expect from the Scarlet and Gray. Of course, more than just Ohio State discussed today as we are welcomed in by Tony Gerdman from Buckeye Huddle. And Gerd, before we get to the box, Tony Petiti, Big Ten Commissioner, with a kind of big announcement to start off today's festivities. Yeah, Big Ten Championship game staying in Indianapolis here at Lucas Oil until uh, through 2028. So I think that was pretty interesting because it has been something that has been talked about as being something that will be sold on down the road. And, and he did kind of go into that. Ryan Day saying, as he has said many times, that this is going to be a team driven by the line. I think there's a lot of faith in the defensive line, but a lot of question marks about the offensive line as we're just a few days away from opening training camp. Yeah, the question still being the right side of the offensive line, which also incorporates center with Seth McLaughlin and Carson Hensman, both guys who have experience as starters. McLaughlin started two years at Alabama. Carson Hensman started last year as a redshirt freshman at Ohio State. One of those guys could end up at right guard along battling uh, with Tegra Shibola and, and Luke Montgomery for that job. Josh Fryer at right tackle seems like he has continued to solidify that, has re-changed, reshaped his body, has really had a strong offseason. They feel pretty good about the left side with Josh Simmons and Donovan Jackson. I think uh, finding a third tackle is going to be key as well. I, they've got so many guys that if your biggest problem is right guard, I don't really think it's much of a problem. Plenty of new faces on Ohio State this year. Who are the maybe two, three names that we need to know the most going into August? Well, the, the main name, and well, if we're talking freshman, and, and that's Jeremiah Smith, because when Ryan Day talked about his receiver depth, he mentioned needing guys four through seven, and he did not list Jeremiah Smith in that, which means he is one through three. And wherever you want to put him in that one through three, probably two or three. Um, so that guy that he's going to play, he's most likely going to start. He's going to play a ton. Caleb Downs. Uh, talked with uh, Emeka Abuka, the receiver, a little bit ago, how he he came in and can play any position. It's like he's always been here, so he can play any any, any kind of scheme. He's obviously going to be the, the quarterback in the secondary for Ohio State. So There's always pressure on an Ohio State football team, but perhaps this year more so than ever, and it doesn't help when Urban Meyer and Jim Trussell are both raving about this roster. Well, and... As the players have said, as Ryan Day has said, it's the same pressure every year. But not every year do you have former coaches saying it's the best roster I've ever seen. And when they say that, I'm, I kind of bristle a bit because there are still question marks at quarterback. And if you have question marks at quarterback, then you can't have the most talented team. You can't have the best team until you see what, those, what, what the quarterback actually does. So there is a ton of talent. As Day said, 12 guys said no to the NFL to come back. That's rare. This is a very talented team. The road game in Oregon is going to be fascinating to see how they respond to that. But they came back with a purpose. And Emeka Abuka said, you can't leave without gold pants. They want that win over Michigan. They said they want to be back here in December at Lucas Oil. 2019, last time Ohio State beat Michigan. 2020, last time they were here at Lucas Oil Fields yeah, because Michigan couldn't field a team against Ohio State in that year of 2020. Well, Tony Gerdman from Buckeye Huddle, thank you so much. That's going to wrap up our coverage from Indianapolis for tonight, but we'll have more the rest of the week as Big Ten Football Media Days continue.